Over 5,000 hackers have been banned from Overwatch. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. Before we get into the hacking stuff, which is amazing to see Blizzard reacting like this and removing loads of accounts, it's actually kind of funny because you can see in the top 500s of various seasons, um, there's no longer 500 because hackers have been banned and you don't retroactively get awarded a top 500 slot. You simply get removed from it if you were a filthy hacker and your account has been deleted. So yeah, it's interesting stuff, but we'll get onto that a bit later on in a video because I want to focus on what Jeff has been talking about on the forums. He has literally just been on the forums talking about a bunch of different topics. So the first place we're going to start is with this. Currently, our plan is to change this system for Overwatch 2. We'll find a way to recognize your accomplishments for those who care about the current plan is for those borders to go away and be replaced with a different system. Now, this is Jeff responding to a post about the portrait borders. Yes, people kind of get annoyed with them these days. Uh, there are a lot of negatives to them. You think about it, if you've got like a gold or even like a platinum border and you're in, I don't know, let's say plat, it can be a sort of angle of attack where people can go, oh my God, look at you, you've got a platinum border, but you're still in plat. You must be terrible. When really what those players don't realize is everybody has their sort of skill ceiling they get to, and that's fine. And it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm like, guys, rank literally doesn't matter. However, it is an angle for attack, right? You've probably seen those people in your games. It's like, oh my God, you've got a gold border, but you can't even get out of Masters. You're terrible. It's like, come on. Like that, that is annoying. But the good thing here is Jeff confirming that this is being changed for Overwatch 2. Now, the question is, what could this actually be? Now, I hope this is some sort of, you know, you know what I really hope this is? I hope we get some sort of weapon adornment system where you can add little things to your weapon, maybe add things to your character skin, do things that show off various achievements. Now, at the moment in Overwatch, if you end up as top 500 in one of the competitive seasons, uh, generally for standard competitive, you will get an animated spray. Now, this is awesome, right? Because it, they're very rare, they're very unique. But that's it, and it's a spray. It doesn't really show on your character. Maybe you want to use a different spray because there's a new spray out for, I don't know, a new event that you like or you want to show your Overwatch League spray. And it's only for a very select few number of people. Now, the other way most players show their achievements are, well, through the portrait banner. So that just shows how long you've played the game for. And yes, it's impressive if you've got a platinum one compared to like a copper or bronze one. But it's not that much, is it? And it's like, okay, that kind of needs changes. So it's good that that's being looked at. So good stuff there from Jeff. But that this is like this is like minuscule news, ladies and gentlemen, compared to what Jeff actually goes into next. What about 2CP? Now, <laughs> this is spicy. All right, let's get into it. We discuss 2CP all the time. It's one of the top discussions we have in the design group. We've spent more time trying to address that game mode and trying changes than any other mode. We've also reworked the maps the most. The mode has some fundamental flaws depending on the context you're coming from. Professional play versus comp versus quick play. Contrary to what some communities would have you believe, not everyone dislikes the maps or the mode. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're off your face, Jeff. The, uh, 2CP, I hate 2CP. Get it out of the game. I mean, you guys let me know what you think about 2CP in the comments below. But for me, it's often a source of a lot of frustration. E even today, like I've been playing a lot of Echo today and... I, I've played Hanamura quite a few times. I don't know why it keeps loading me into Hanamura, but whatever. And there was a game of Volskaya. They're all defeats. It's all 2CP, so blame 2CP. But it's just because people won't group together. And it is so annoying to play. Whereas, you know, just put me on King of the Hill or put me in King's Row all day. I'm fine with that. Let's go. Anyway, let's get on. We'll continue to try solutions for both the mode and the maps. It's definitely something that's top of the mind for us. There just aren't easy silver bullet solutions. So this is interesting, right? This is them saying, look, we're always looking at 2CP. We're trying to make changes to the mode. And there's been a bunch of changes to the mode recently. We do know that they are working on Paris and working on Horizon, changing those maps. And Jeff has said there is a new assault map coming out. So there is a new map coming out. Two other maps are being reworked. They're trying to do stuff to fix this mode. I'm still not going to be the biggest fan of it because I still don't like the fact it is attack into a very strong defensive position. Hopefully you get a pick and you can push. If you don't, they get a pick on your team, then it's a prolonged, drawn-out fight, and then it's trickling in, trickling in. Whereas at the pro level, two teams go against each other. As soon as one team gets a pick, if it's the attackers that get a pick, they go in deep. If it's the defenders get a pick, the attacking team regroup, wait for the respawn, and go again. That never happens in competitive. It doesn't even happen at GM. It is a, it, it's a mess, right? So that's why it's, to me, not great in competitive, and it is a source of major frustration. But anyway, Jeff goes on because he's got more information, and this is juicy information. 
So he was being asked, or he shows up in a thread, talking about the new competitive mode, the open competitive, which doesn't have any roll queue um, restrictions on it. So it's basically kind of classic competitive if you look at it that way. And Jeff says this, I'm glad you're enjoying it. We're discussing the future of the mode right now. It's interesting to see what regions and platforms are responding to the different modes in the game. I know you all enjoy stats, so have fun theory crafting with this chart. Keep in mind, this is just data from one day. So I'm like, what is this? What is Jeff showing us here? Well, let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is the period total for average percentage of daily hours, and it is broken down into every region the game is available in. So you've got North America, European Union, Korea, China, and then you've got the console platforms. Now, what we're looking at here is the amount of hours that are spent in a certain game mode. Now, this is just for one day. So we don't actually know what day this is, and we don't know how this data changes when you, you know, broaden out over a month, over a year. We don't know. But it's interesting to look at. Anyway, any kind of data like this is super cool to look at. So let's take a look at NA and EU, and let's compare those regions, because you would think those regions are fairly similar, right? Well, look at this. Ranked is taking up the majority of the playtime. You've got 35% and A, you've got 34% for EU. And that's fine, right? It's pretty similar. That, that's okay. Then you go and look at quick play. Well, look at this. North America has actually got quite a lot more quick play being played on this day. So it's got 31% of hours spent were in quick play. 22% in EU were spent in quick play. That's a, that's a big, that's basically a 10% difference almost there. That's pretty huge. And then we go down to the third most popular um, play mode. And this again is interesting. So Quick Play Classic is the third most popular mode in North America. And then you've got Arcade Ranked Open Queue is a lot more popular in Europe than it is in North America. In fact, it's twice as popular based off the average percentage of daily hours played. And that is super cool. And then the lists start changing. And you can see things where certain regions like the workshop more certain regions don't so where is the workshop most popular actually on nintendo switch people like to play around in the workshop and you know that makes sense to me because the switch it's like you have a really it's a different experience for overwatch it's like a fun like it's not a try hardy experience it's like hey i'm using the gyro controls for widowmaker and maybe you mess around in widowmaker headshot modes in the workshop i don't know but to me that kind of makes sense but if we look at the switch figures so this is under the nx um, row, as you guys can see, or column. There's an interesting thing here. So you have got 35% quick play. It is the most popular mode on that platform. Now, Jeff gives a reason for this. It's because this is the platform with the highest population of accounts under 25. So basically, they can't go into ranked. So they're playing in quick play. And that's why, because not a lot of them have got access to ranked. And it makes sense, right? Because if you look at it this way, the, all the other platforms have been available for like, what, four years now almost? Uh, the Switch is only a year. It's not even a year old. The Switch is like, what, seven months old? So yeah, um, that makes sense there. But it, this is really cool to look at. When you start looking across some of the other brackets as well. So if we if we were to break down Korea, because Korea is always an interesting place. Ranked is popular in Korea. In fact, Ranked is the most popular. Oh, no, sorry. It's the most popular in NA compared with the game modes. But in Korea, it's very popular. So it's 34.6%. But the second most played mode is Arcade, and it's Ranked Open Division. So this is where you've got the anomaly. These guys like Ranked, and I don't think that's any kind of a, a surprise, right? It's Korea. They like competitive games. It's where esports effectively came from. These guys, you know, yeah, a lot of the best players for a lot of the best games out there in the world, they all come from Korea. So it's no shock to me that these guys are the, the, the top consumers of competitive modes in Overwatch. It's just crazy. But then as you start going down the list, you start seeing different kinds of numbers and figures. But one thing you'll see which is a consistent across all of the regions is arcade elimination. <laughs> uh, yeah, people don't really play that. <laughs> arcade deathmatch, yeah, I mean, that's not really the most popular again, but it's not too bad. No limits is okay. Workshop is generally creeping up there. Then you've got mystery heroes. So I think when you look at this, you can very much say that, okay, based off this one 24-hour period of information and data, that yes, ranked is the most popular mode for daily hours spent, then it is generally quick play. However, ranked open queue is doing really well, and it seems to be doing a lot better than all the other modes. However, this is a new mode, which is on the arcade right now. So that's probably why it's got a bump in popularity. But then again, it could be because people really like the mode. And I'm sure 
blizzards will be looking at this information and they'll make a decision if it stays popular like this then we'll probably get that mode in some sort of way and it'll be available all the time on the uh on the arcade potentially now there are other other arcade modes that are not available here and you guys are probably thinking well what why the hell are they not here what's going on i know people playing them have they got no stats well it's because they might have been out of rotation for the day this information was collected but i thought this would have been cool well this is cool to look at ladies and gentlemen um it's nice that we get these kind of stats and uh yeah let me know what you think about this in the comments below so what about these hackers that have been banned? So 5,000 plus accounts have been banned for hacking. Now, I want to show you guys this screenshot. This is of the Chinese top 500. You'll notice that there is a number there and, it, and it's 32. There are a lot of accounts that seem to have gone missing here. Um, uh, yeah, this is because if you are banned for being a cheater, a hacker, or you're just super toxic or whatever, if your account is basically deleted, by blizzard then you're removed from the top 500 now this is the same across multiple different regions obviously china is the most impacted because china's got a very um interesting relationship shall we say with hacking and cheating it's almost i don't want to say it's culturally culturally acceptable but they've got a different view to it than the rest of the world where hey if you can pay for it and and it, then it's kind of fine it's not kind of fine and it never is kind of fine and hackers and cheaters should be re removed out of games um but yeah we've been seeing this sort of repeated across a bunch of of different regions but yeah this is good news that blizzard are taking action and have banned a massive number of accounts because we have been seeing a little bit of an increase in the number of people hacking overwatch which isn't great and again with something like overwatch which is a competitive game if people are hacking it ruins the game it destroys competitive integrity so yeah you've got to fix it blizzard and then you kind of look at other games out there like call of duty warzone which is absolutely rammed with hackers apex legends got a lot of hackers there and, and they can ruin the game and you really don't want that of course those are free-to-play games, so they do suffer with that because, well, Overwatch, you have to buy the game. It does have that barrier in place. But yeah, cool news nonetheless. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember, um, well, like the video and uh, leave a comment below and all that good stuff. You know where to find me if you want to find me. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are still doing all right. And remember to keep washing your hands. I'll catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.